hidden in the shadows, a tiny insect, yes, an insect, holds a significant secret, one that affects millions around the world. You see, this is the story of the kissing bug and the disease it spreads. You see, the kissing bug is more than just an unwelcome guest. You see it right there on your TV screen. It's a carrier of a potentially life-threatening illness that often goes unnoticed. Now, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the kissing bug disease is now considered an endemic illness right here in the U.S. Joining us to discuss this and so much more is Dr. Michael Skoma. Dr. Skoma, good to see you, sir, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I think this is a very important topic for people to, uh, to know about, and thank you for having me. Yeah, but of course, uh, I'm going to ask the question that I'm sure a lot of my viewers are probably asking themselves. What in the heck is a kissing bug? <laughs> what disease are we making reference to, sir? So the kissing, the kissing bug is in, uh, it, it was an endemic, uh, um, uh, basically it's a bug that ba a basically it's a sand fly that essentially uh, is responsible for the spread of this parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. And when it affects someone, uh, it basically starts off with more of an acute uh, f uh, type infection in terms of fever. Uh, facial swelling above the eye is very common and things of that nature. The problem is, is that if it is undiagnosed and undetected and leads to what we call chronicity, meaning it's untreated and it becomes a more long-term infection, that's where you are dealing with uh, potentially uh, life-threatening uh, issues. Yeah. Dr. Skoma, I, I truly enjoy the outdoors. I uh, took a hike the other day and really enjoyed it. And I, I got to be honest with you, I was not familiar with the kissing bug. Is this something new? Is it new to this territory, new to this area? How did it get here and why have I not heard about it before? So it's been, it's, it's been around. There's roughly 300,000 cases uh, in the United States annually. Uh, it originally it, uh, it originates in um, Latin America. Uh, however, in the last number of weeks, there's been uh, a significant spread um, probably due to uh, climate changes and things of that nature, uh, where, as you had mentioned, it's become more endemic uh, to these areas. Um, and uh, uh, essentially, it has been around for quite some time. Um, however, the uh, incidences are increasing uh, in, uh, in uh, the United States, particularly in uh, Canada, Arizona, Texas is a hot spot, uh, Louisiana, Missouri, um, Mississippi, and uh, Arkansas in particular. Uh, yeah, uh, yet again, truly troubling. And uh, I, I, I'm nearly at a loss for words because I was not privy to all of this. But uh, thankfully, thankfully, because of you, we now have a better understanding of what to look out for. Now that we know that we're dealing with something like this, the next question has to be, how in the heck do we combat it? So the idea, first off, is di with anything is diagnosis. And sometimes that can be a bit of an issue because when you initially get sick with it, it's very kind of nonspecific, fever, swollen lymph nodes, headache, which is very common with many other types of infections, particularly around the summer, particularly when you have tick-borne infections predominant and, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and you know, infections like that. Um, you know, the issue is, is really basically uh, when you, if you do suspect this, You've really got to seek out a professional, uh, namely an infectious disease doctor. Um, they've got to, they can diagnose it um, through uh, serology, meaning they check your blood and they're looking for antibodies against it. Uh, and when it is diagnosed, that's when you have to implement treatment. So it is treatable. Um, however, obviously you can get the best results when treated early. Uh, and it is an antiparasitic medication. There's a couple of them but they have to be actually acquired directly from the CDC. So this is not something that you're obtaining from uh, your local or big box pharmacy. This is specifically from the CDC. Yeah, uh, one of the things, as uh, uh, my producer Remy put up the B-roll earlier, you got a chance to see how big this bug is. It's about the size of a penny. And so with that being said, I'm curious, is there a certain type of bites we should look for? For example, I know what a mosquito bite looks like. I know how it begins to swell, how it, uh, it's inflamed, if you will. Is there something in particular I should look for with regard to the kissing bug? Not really specifically with respect to these bites. They're very nonspecific, and that's the issue. The real thing to look for is what is very unique to the initial stage of infection with this uh, microbe is there's this 
one-sided swelling that almost always occurs over the eye. Um, and that's something to really kind of look for because it's very unique to any other basic kind of bite that you can get. It's not going to appear, there's really nothing specific in terms of the, the bite appearance. Um, it doesn't leave a specific uh, rash or a, a sequelae like a, like a bullseye, for example, when uh, some people get tick, uh, uh, sustained uh, tick-borne infections. Um, so there's nothing specific to the bite, um, but it's really more to look for uh, getting it in these hot spots, coming down with some flu-like fever type illness, muscle aches and things of that nature, um, obtaining or, or developing this kind of swelling over the eye, which is very unique to this infection, and then seeking out a specialist to do serologies in hopes of a diagnosis and a quick treatment. Because again, if it's not treated, that's where this is something that can be potentially deadly. Yet again, vital information from Dr. Michael Skoma. Folks that want to find out more information, sir, how would one go about to do so? Uh, the best would be to go to the CDC website um, in terms of the uh, epidemiology section, in terms of looking at um, what are the more potent you know, hotspots in terms of what I had laid out. Sure. Uh, otherwise, I would basically stress that if there is any sort of concern for sustaining this, it's imperative to immediately seek out uh, attention from uh, uh, an, an appointment with an infectious disease specialist as they're best equipped to deal with these. Well said, Dr. Skoma. Truly appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the Live Zone and Thank bringing more awareness me. to this. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. You bet. All right, folks.